Hello everyone. You probably don't know the answer to many questions, right? You can ask your parents why the sky is blue and why cows don't have wings, but there are things you want to find out on your own. On the other hand, you don't feel like googling them right now and you've got better things to do. But don't worry, because we're here to help. And in this video, we're going to tell you the answers to 10 simple questions you probably didn't know. Let's get it on. Ice Cream Cone why is ice cream often made in a waffle cone? Well, just by thinking of it, we wanted to eat something yummy, but let's go back to ice cream. A pair of ice cream balls in a waffle cup is the most popular form of ice cream nowadays. But why is it made of waffle? And why does it look exactly like this? Let's take a short trip back in time. The first ice cream waffle cups appeared in the 18th century, but only in the late 19th and early 20th centuries this dessert became so affordable that it was even sold on the street. At that time, sellers were using small glasses, which the client had to return after eating a portion and maybe licking the container. After that, the glass was rinsed quickly and then the ice cream was served again for another sweet tooth lover. However, this method was really inconvenient because of the glasses constantly breaking, but also contributed to the transfer of a lot of unpleasant and even dangerous diseases. But things changed after an incident in St. Louis, USA in 1904. That summer was terribly hot, and there was a large queue near the ice cream tray. Of course, in such conditions, the seller simply didn't have time to wash the cups. Luckily, there was a seller of waffles nearby, and he had no clients. As a result, the vendors decided to join together and began putting ice cream in waffle cups. Rubber-tipped shoes Surely most of our viewers at least once in their lives wore Converse because it's convenient, elegant, and sometimes quite cheap. Rubber tips are a distinguishing feature of these shoes, but very few people know where these tips come from. Contrary to popular belief, this is not just a design feature. Initially in the 19th century, this was a sport footwear, but they didn't have any rubber tips. Everything changed in 1917 when the world-famous company Converse launched a series of shoes designed specifically for basketball players. During the game, the players often stepped on each other's toes, and the new rubber tips significantly reduced the pressure. Yeah, maybe you'll say that's a lie because just yesterday someone stepped on your foot in the subway and… Calm down, calm down. The fact is that at any time, the rubber layer on the toes was much thicker and therefore stronger. But today, Converse are used as everyday shoes, and therefore they don't need this toe protection. Blinking It is well known that the muscles responsible for blinking are the fastest muscles in the body. Of course, since a person can blink several times per second, but what if you stop blinking? We're not to blink. If you blink, we go back to the start. Well, first of all, we have to say that it's simply impossible to stop blinking completely. Even if you try really hard, sooner or later you will start blinking again. Plop, well, we told you. And the point is that since our very, very distant ancestors came out of the water, human eyes and those of other animals require constant wetting, so we must blink. If you don't blink for too long, dry mucous membranes will cause severe itching, and little particles such as dust or sand will just drive you crazy and eventually, well, in the end, you'll just blink. Fur in jackets Many certainly notice that warm jackets often have a fur strip attached to the hood. Sometimes you can unbutton this part, sometimes you have to unbutton the hood, but anyway, almost any winter jacket or coat has this detail. But how did this fur appear there, and why do you even need it? It's quite simple. The first hoods were used by people in the far north to protect themselves from extreme temperatures, wind and snow. But even if you put on a hood, your face is still open. So what can you do in such a situation? For this purpose, the northern people came up with this idea, putting some fur on the hood to protect their faces even in the most violent blizzard. Well, nowadays the fur part of the hood usually performs a decorative function. In other words, it just makes the jacket a little more beautiful. Pretzels we believe that everyone knows what a pretzel is, right? A very strangely shaped bun which consists of several loops, so to speak. Many of you have even tried it, but very few people know why this delicious product looks like this and not like a spiral or a fine sweet bread. 
According to one version, the first pretzels appeared back in the Middle Ages, and their shape, according to the creator's plan, should have resembled a pair of hands crossed in prayer. Yes, the author of the pretzel was a German Franciscan monk that often prayed in this position, which gave rise to the world-famous delight. Bread Cuts what about another culinary fact? So imagine a loaf of bread. It's still warm, crisp, it smells so great, and it probably has small cuts on top, right? In fact, it's difficult to imagine bread without these strange details. But are they really so necessary? Well, even professional bakers answer this question in different ways. Some say that the cuts are necessary to avoid cracks in the crust during cooking. Because if you make the cracks yourself, it means the bread won't, right? But others, on the contrary, claim that the crusts have absolutely nothing to do with it, because there are loaves of bread without any cuts. Look, they look pretty whole. These dough masters are convinced that the cuts on the bread are made only to avoid confusing different types of bread. After all, in a bakery, there are more than a dozen of them, and not always one loaf can be distinguished from another only by its shape. Perhaps, were it not for the cuts, bakers would have to bite every single one of their products, and this probably wouldn't please the customers. <coughs> pin code So probably everyone knows why you need a pin code, but why does it only consist of four digits, no more and no less? To answer this question, we'll have to go back in history. Pin codes were invented relatively recently, only in 1996, and it was to give universal access to bank accounts. Initially, the Scottish inventor James Goodfellow insisted on six figures because it was more secure, but the first test of technology, which he did on his wife, showed that remembering a combination of six digits is too difficult. The engineer's wife complained that it's easy to confuse the sequence and is really uncomfortable. James listened to his wife and reduced the number of digits to four, and it seems that it was great for both of them. And we must thank Mrs. Goodfellow, because if it weren't for her, people all over the world would have had to remember six-digit passwords, and many of us would probably have permanently lost access to our savings. Elbow Patches this decorative element can be found in almost any wardrobe item. In some cases, the patches are simply added to make a jacket look cooler. On the other hand, thanks to them, the fabric on the elbows rubs less and the clothing lasts longer. But this fashion has its origins in the army. During the battles, the soldiers had to crawl a lot, leaning on their elbows, and therefore the sleeves quickly wore out. So to avoid such problems, special patches were sewn on the elbows, and in the 1950s this element was borrowed by American students. Because it looks great, why else? And ever since, you can see elegant patches on the elbows not only on military men, but also on the most devoted fashion followers. Shoe Loops we're sure you've probably wondered why you need these strange loops located on the back of your favorite shoes. Actually, this mysterious element can have several functions at once. Of course, the main idea is that it's comfortable when wearing high-laced shoes. Just hold on to the loop and put your foot in the shoe. In fact, it makes the process of putting on the shoes much easier and faster. However, this isn't the only possible use of these loops. For example, they can be used for an extra string around the leg. If you think the laces will loosen up, and the shoe will fly off your foot at the most inconvenient moment, or it'll just get loose and give you a terribly unpleasant corn. In addition, the loops are ideal for drying wet shoes, which you can hang easily using this convenient detail. Yeah, it's like a life hack by shoe manufacturers. Letters on the keyboard You'll most likely be watching this video while sitting at your computer, so look at your keyboard for a second. Have you ever thought about why the letters in it are placed exactly like this and not in alphabetical order, for example? In fact, it'd be much more convenient to look for them, right? This location of the letters on modern keyboards is due to typewriters, which appeared in the 19th century. Only the very first models had the letter buttons installed in strict alphabetical order in two rows. For a long time, all users were satisfied with this, but gradually the printing speed increased and the little hammers printing on the paper couldn't keep up with the operators. They got entangled with each other and the technology just broke down. This was because many letters that were used more frequently than others were side by side because of the alphabetical order, and therefore these hammers buckled together all the time. Machine manufacturers seriously considered this problem, carried out research, came to some conclusions and then developed a keyboard in which the letters often found in text were placed away from the index fingers. Yeah, once upon a time people basically printed with only two fingers. So this is how the famous QWERTY keyboard appeared, which is still in use today. 
Friends, did you know the answers to these questions? Tell us in the comments and don't forget to give us a like. Guys, it's time to recharge your brain. Visit the channel Brain Time. There you'll find a lot of interesting and useful facts, lots of positive energy and tons of useful information. Subscribe right now. We promise it's going to be really exciting. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.